Hello oh, and welcome. Ahead. I'm so glad I get to spend some time with you today. Today's guest comes to us all the way from Western Australia to share the importance of personal branding and using LinkedIn. But first, let me remind you that Patients Getting Paid is more than just a podcast. It's a membership community where people with chronic illness learn to find and create flexible remote work that both accommodates their health and generates an income. Imagine co-workings, trainings and workshops on things like how to build a website, voiceover work, writing for publications, how to become a patient advocate, selling on eBay, starting a photo management business, becoming a virtual assistant, how to start a podcast editing business, and so, so much more. Oh, and weekly updated condition-specific gigs. To learn more or to join us, go to patientsgettingpaid.com. Hope to see you on the inside. Megan McNeil of Relevant Personal Branding is a gin snob, beach bum, book clubber, and also a personal brand strategist and LinkedIn specialist. And that's why I invited her here today, although I'll certainly take a little direction on the gin if she's offering. Welcome, Megan. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much, Kathy. I'm, I'm so, so excited to be here. <laughs> I'm so excited you're here all the way from Western Australia. And let me tell you, she you're not going to hear an Australian accent, though, because... She's from yep, Scotland. Just here to confuse everyone. <laughs> yeah, she's from Scotland. Her husband's from Canada and they live in Australia. So you go figure that one out. Um, anyway, and they have a sweet baby named Lewis that's just six months old and he's sleeping right now. So we'll try and be quiet and let him sleep. Fingers crossed he's still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Here's hoping. So how about sharing a bit about your work and your educational background and why you niche down to personal branding specifically? Oh, well, so my background, I studied geography and psychology at university, which wow. is very random. <laughs> I, geography, just because I loved my geography teacher when I was in high school, and it just seemed like the, you know, what I was going to go and do when I went to university, and psychology, just because I was really passionate about it. And that was kind of accidental, because that was a class I needed to take just for oh. the points. <laughs> and I ended up loving it. And um, I did take a marketing module as well, but I, I never really stuck with that but it's actually the psychology that's helped me way more with my marketing right understanding people like it's yes. just I mean everything comes back down to just understanding people marketing is psychology um, yes yeah completely Absolutely. and I guess the marketing stuff never really um I don't know it never resonated with me because all the examples you get when you're in university is like coca-cola and like the big names mcdonald's apple yeah. everything like that and that didn't really appeal to me because um, mm -hmm. I've always worked in not-for-profits, which I didn't realize at the time because 17-year-old Megan wasn't thinking about that. Right. But all my career had been um, not-for-profits and I ended up in marketing gigs. And if anyone who's listening has ever worked in a not-for-profit, you will know that they are lacking in resources, financial, yes. people, Funding. you name it. Yeah. There's not much. Mm -hmm. And... I, I guess it was just through that I used to be able to place like my presidents, my CEOs, my chairs, anyone like of importance within the organization. I could get them media, I could get them on a stage, I could get them in the paper, I could get them in the room with the right people, conversations, mm -hmm. meetings, you name it. But when you had the actual organization's logo, it was much harder and there was a price tag attached because it was seen as advertising. But when it was a person, it was seen as conversation, educational, information, right. etc. And again, this still was not clicking with me. I just was doing what I had, what I could do with yeah. hardly any marketing budget. Right. And then I decided to start my own business. And I started working for corporate. So I had some lawyers, lawyer firms and accountancies and stuff like that. And um, I started doing the same stuff I'd been doing with my not-for-profits, which was getting the partners, getting them PR, promoting mm. them, building their brand as opposed to the organizations, uh, which was fine. It was a new way of doing marketing for them and they quite yeah. liked it and they got stuff from it, but okay. it wasn't really what they were expecting. Yeah. Then I'm listening to a podcast one day and this guy's talking about personal branding and I just sat there and went, are you kidding me? That's what like, I'm doing. <laughs> that's what I do. <laughs> so I, uh, I completely rebranded um, basically overnight and ever since I've been relevant personal branding as opposed to relevant marketing and it's just gone so much better now that I have my niche and I love it. And it's You're aligned. All 
Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's so good. So, okay, let's, let's go right down to the basics. What is a personal brand? And then I guess from that, we'll understand what a personal brand strategist is, right? So think about marketing, but for a person rather than a company. Okay. Branding is what people think, feel, and say about you. So as soon as you walk out of the room, whatever that feeling is that you've left with people, or if they've remembered you or not, that is your brand. Um, and that's, oh. I guess, we all want to build a legacy. Nobody wants to be forgotten, but you're the storyteller. So either you start telling your story, otherwise someone else is going to. So oh, per point. personal branding, it says branding for a human rather than an organization. Got it. And you help in, well, I, do you, um, how do you do that? Like, how do you start with that? Do you just figure out the essence of them and then how to position that and what like publications or websites to go to to expose them well, <laughs> it's a poor it's choice of, of words sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's um it's mainly reverse engineering so i'll work with someone and generally my clients will be fairly successful within their fields like they've mm -hmm. got the knowledge base they've got a fairly sturdy network within their industry or their sector financially they're doing okay they're, it's not a case of like I want to make a million dollars they've got bigger not bigger aspirations but they've got aspirations of wanting to make a difference somewhere so I've got um, a client who is wanting to bridge well is in the middle of travel Part of his story is bridging the gap between indigenous businesses and the mining sector. I've got another one who's all about innovation and investing and making sure that investing is accessible to everyone. So it's not just for people with deep pockets. So he's really trying to myth bust, I guess, that, that kind of stuff. I've got a lady who I'm working with who is all about trying to uh, empower women financially. Now, in their given sectors, they're all very successful already but they want to be known for this thing that makes them special mm. because at the end of the day when you've got a product or a service it's the exact same as the product or service as someone else as your competition yeah. the only difference is you right so what makes you different what can make people want to work with you basically and yeah. what's your differentiation so yeah okay. i guess that's that's the biggest thing um, is reverse engineering. What do you, what's your legacy? What do you want to be remembered for? Right, right. It's a long-term thing. Well, yeah. and I would imagine you can leverage that personal brand in, you know, seeking a job or building an online business, right? I mean, this could oh, really yeah. benefit chronicpreneurs, which is what I call us um, yeah. in PGP because you it's like putting your best foot forward right it's like your calling card your brand right your personal brand oh, yes. who you are yes yeah. and people kind of get a bit hung up thinking it's about likes on instagram or being a famous person a kardashian you know, have to have a reality yes. show no your personal brand can be as big or as small as you need it to be for your end goal so if you're wanting to sell a million copies of a book that you've just written, then yes, you need to have mass. You need to have that social media following. If it's a, a job, a promotion within a job or within an industry, you just need to be known by the right people. That might be a handful of people. So it's making sure you're at the right networking events, you're utilizing um, platforms like LinkedIn, you're where you need to be. You're having conversations with the right people. Um, it depends what your end goal is, where your brand needs to be. It is not a vanity matrix thing. It's not about getting multiple likes on different platforms and being everywhere. It's yeah. about being in the right place, being seen by the right people for where you're Perfect. trying to go. Yes. Thank you for differentiating that because that can get confusing. You're exactly right. I mean, I do think people conflate that a lot with, you know, how many likes <laughs> did my last post get? Um, oh, I yeah. So I can see, based on what you just described, how LinkedIn would be phenomenal for something like this. It would be integral, in fact, right? So, it, and in your intake document, you said it was powerful for building your personal brand. I mean, that makes sense to me now that you just described it. But can you tell everybody listening why that would be? Why LinkedIn would be so integral to this? Right. So basically every social media uh, platform is integral if your target audience is sitting at the other end of 
that platform. Yeah. If you look at Instagram, I love Instagram. Instagram's fun. Who doesn't love to have a good scroll? You're on holiday one minute, you're looking at puppies <laughs> the next, or in my case, Jen, normally. It's brilliant, but it's saturated. So to be able to try and have some cut through is quite difficult. Yeah. You have to, like, I mean, there's you have to create a lot of content to have that same kind of cut through. TikTok is, um, you can have a lot more cut through at the moment. The organic reach is much better. It's bigger, etc. But is everybody comfortable making videos? Is your target audience on TikTok? Right. So that matters as well. Facebook pay to play, like it's very saturated now. Yeah. It's not as easy to be able to build that audience that once was. Twitter, I mean, in Australia, Twitter, unless you're in agriculture, it's not worth having at all. Oh, wow, Link- interesting. Yeah, uh, media and agriculture, that's basically the only kind of uh, industries that use it over here. Whereas LinkedIn, it's, I mean, it's not new. It's been around for 10 plus years. Yeah. I, I know I've had the platform for 10 years. Me it was too. a recruiter's tool. Yeah. And people think oh, it's professional. It's hard. It's like, it's, you know, where I've got to be dressed up and have a suit on. It's not that at all. It has changed so much in the last few years since Microsoft bought it. And it's really trying to help you, the consumer, to be able to have that reach because it wants to build its platform. So the organic reach is there. That's where the real power of it is at the moment. So things like TikTok and LinkedIn, they really have got the power of reach at the moment, the organic reach, which is fantastic. Depends, again, where's your audience? What kind of content are you comfortable making? But the interesting thing with LinkedIn is there's only about 1% to 3% of people, depending on what stats you're looking at, but it's 3% is the most I've ever seen. 3% of people that are on LinkedIn are making regular content. Now, by regular content, that means posting, say, once a week regularly. That means there's 90-odd percent of people that are scrollers, they're consumers. Yeah. So what are you going to be, a spectator or a participator? Get in there. Get in there. Yeah. And, you know, I did not realize, and I do use LinkedIn a lot, and I have gotten great gigs off of LinkedIn and just, I mean, some legitimate like, hey, we we saw you on LinkedIn. We've got this, you know, gig. Are you interested? More so, though, it's been, hi, Kathy, I am such and so, and I, you know, am in a, a very similar industry or something like that. And so it's these connections. And then as something comes available, they remember me um, or they yep. get back to me or, hey, we're putting together this advisory board. We think you'd be good for it. You know, it helps you stay top of mind, right? So it might not result in something right that second, but it's making an impression on these people. But what I started to say, sorry, I went down that rabbit hole, um, is that there's there's so much more you can do on there now than I even recognize. Like I just saw that you can now do LinkedIn Live. I did not know that that was a thing. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> that's huge everything's going live right yeah and videos and I mean uh, video is the way to go across the board don't you think like that's that's the expectation now on social media that's how people are consuming things do you agree well yes and no that I mean every social media platform like they are definitely wanting you to do video because it prioritizes video with all, within all their feeds yeah but depending again who's your target audience because a lot of my corporates they're writing like really good articles yes it doesn't have priority within the feed but it has longevity because in three months or in three years time if the right keywords are in there those articles are still being found it, mm. basically the seo of linkedin i'm not really sure if that's what you call it but same as you would work with the SEO for your blog and the making sure you've got the keywords in there. But LinkedIn's got such a high authority that if people are searching things, that article could come up on Google on the first page. That's fantastic. But it's not going to give you those vanity metrics on the right. first day because it's just not getting priority. But is your end user or the person you're trying to speak to, maybe they like reading articles because a lot of CEOs and a lot of corporates these people read, they read right. the newspaper still, they read books, they consume content like that. Yes. They don't watch reels. They don't watch that funny is little such videos. such a great point. I'm so glad you just made that, Megan. And so if you aspire to be a CEO, start reading. <laughs> That's, oh yeah. Let's get back to reading. Yeah. Anyway, but, or audio books. Yes. Audio books are good. <laughs> yeah. And of course, podcasts are awesome. Um, oh yeah. 
since <laughs> having a baby and not having hands to actually have a book I've discovered right. audio books and I'm yes. just like this is like why did it no is... one tell me before <laughs> I know it's so great I I am a new book clubber myself I saw you're a book clubber um and I, what I found is trying to find time to read during the day is just ridiculous and at night I fall asleep but these audiobooks, because I, I go for walks every day, and all of a sudden I'm like, and then I go, why are you trying to, you know, multitask something that should be, you should just sit down and read and find the time and make time for this. But I, I'm like, efficiency, man. I don't have a lot of time. We're, again, going down a rabbit hole. But I but I do think a lot of people, um, you know, should listen to audiobooks if not read. So this is a public service announcement for you folks listening right now. Um, all right, back on track. I saw on your website you said one post on LinkedIn is the equivalent of three posts, two reels, and appearing in your stories daily on Instagram. That's yeah. huge. And I wanted to make sure and get that out there to everyone who has either poo-pooed LinkedIn or hasn't given it much thought. LinkedIn is the bomb.com, I'm telling you. I am I am always amazed at the number of yep. people that reach out to me, that find me, that find my podcast, that find everything I'm working on there and how people remember you later. Once they find you, even if they don't reach out right then, it's like, oh yeah, yep. Kathy would be good for this. I highly the recommend. The quality. Yeah, but even the quality of the stuff you find on LinkedIn. I mean, if you're seeing a lot of stuff on your feed that you don't like, then you need to start unfollowing or defriending, I guess, if right. you want to put it that way with what you're following and who your friends are connected with on LinkedIn because you don't want to see people sitting on the top of their Ferrari being like, oh, I made a million dollars. Right. No, like that's not what you're there for. Whereas I find that on other platforms like Instagram, I, I love Instagram, I really do. But the amount of content you have to create just to stay relevant on there is extreme. So what happens is people start putting out a load of rubbish, content mm. that shouldn't be out there filler content basically mm. just to keep themselves up on the, in the feeds etc whereas if, on LinkedIn it's just quality if you've got mm. nothing to say this week don't say it you've got right. two things to say this week then post them both you know it's not it doesn't need you to be that is true every single day yeah it there really is it, you can feel that shift just when you get on that platform it just feels well obviously it's it's a professional platform um but to your point it has really shifted over the years and is not so sort of stuffy as i think it used to be it's it's a more relaxed environment but yet it it does maintain its um professional vibe and i love what you just said about like all these others, I mean, they do tend to be vanity metrics that people are, you know, I have this many followers and this many likes and that sort of thing. And it's just not, that's not, that's not the jam over at LinkedIn. It is really, the people are there for the right reasons. <laughs> and yeah. um, it, it really does, it's much more professional. I far prefer it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think back to the, just to finish on the vanity matrix for a yeah. second though, because, you know, you might look on, Instagram and someone's got hundreds of likes and stuff like that and that's like oh it must be very popular a lot of people are just looking at the picture they like that they like the colors or whatever and they haven't bothered to read the actual content of it whereas on LinkedIn I might get a post that has maybe 10 likes on it but in the background I can see 5,000 people have actually read that now yes. even if that says 5,000 people now that's that's based on dwell time. So that means they've got to have stayed on. They have, can't scroll past it to be right. counted. They've got to be on there for about three seconds at least. Yeah. Um, so say that 5,000, only half of them actually read past the five, six seconds of it. That's still two and a half thousand people. Yeah. But you'd only think 10 liked it. Right. You know, so that's... you've got to remember people are passive on LinkedIn. Yes. Whereas on Instagram and Facebook, it's just scroll, like, scroll, like. They just, yes. It's just a double tap for the sake of it. Whereas yeah. you don't get that as much because, I don't know if it's just because of the demographics that you use the platform. You just don't get that. So, so true. You might, yeah. yeah. I love that you pointed that out because that is so true because I have on occasion, certainly before I realized the truth in what you just said, gotten on there and thought, oh, come on, this was really great article. But yeah, like you said, it might be, <laughs> right, 
what do you people want from me? But, it, you know, it's just a few likes, but it's right there and kind of, it's kind of almost grayed out where it says how many people have actually viewed it. And, um, but pay, that's obviously more important. We have just gotten into this mindset of, yeah, the vanity metrics, the likes, how many people have liked this, but LinkedIn is, is different. Likes don't pay the bills. <laughs> Amen, sister. So true. <laughs> So what are some of the top mistakes people typically make when using LinkedIn? Well, one would obviously be looking for likes <laughs> and only looking at likes, right? Um, one of the biggest mistakes is if you've come from using one of the other platforms and you're new to LinkedIn, it's very much about feeling like you need to have content going out continually. You don't. You, you don't need to have that continual um, content stream going out you just need yeah. to have quality content yes. the other one would be not conversing with other people on there it is a social network I always like to think of uh, LinkedIn as an actual in-person uh, networking event so if you go there you will not stand in the corner and not speak to anyone you will not throw your business card out willy-nilly to everyone right. you will engage you'll have real conversations with people so start having conversations on other people's content. It's not just a one-way stream where you put your content out and expect people just to engage with your stuff. You need to right. go and engage with other people's stuff. Oh, Who are the right. other people in your industry? Who are the people that are the experts and the thought leaders and the people you look up to? What's on their content? Start having conversations with people within their content yeah. down in the um, the chats. Well, not the chat, sorry, the... Um, the comments. Oh, the, yeah. the comments. The comments. That's the word. <laughs> it's late everyone. in Australia. <laughs> it's yeah. late in Australia and she's got a baby. Enough said. Um, yes. You know, so engage. Use yeah. it like a real networking event. It just right. happens to be online. That hmm. is a great tip. And the other thing I've I've been so pleasantly surprised with in LinkedIn in particular is that you really can converse with CEOs and like the top yes. echelon that you wouldn't dream that you'd be able to reach, but you'll even comment on something they've posted and they'll comment back. I mean, there've been many times where I kind of sit back and go, oh, such and so just commented on something I commented on. It's just, I don't know, the reach is just, it's a different vibe, 100% if you haven't been on LinkedIn or you haven't been on LinkedIn in a while. It's changed, it's so much better. And I just love it. It's truly one of my my favorite places. And also, it doesn't. It's not snarky and ugly. You know, it seems relatively free of politics. It really is about business and business people, and and you know, meeting each other. It's just networking. It's ne virtual networking is what it is. And I loved what you said about you wouldn't go to a party and just stand in the corner. Get in there, like engage. Yeah, that's exactly right. And get known. You know, get known. <laughs> Yeah. Um, are there some basic tips and tricks you could suggest to the PGP listeners that are easy but can have a big impact? And I want to start with one. I have one to offer, which is yeah, go for it. don't in your profile picture, it should be professional and from like, you know, the chest up. Don't be holding a beer. <laughs> don't be like, it shouldn't be a party picture, or anything like that. I've I've scrolled through some things and I've been surprised at some things I've seen on there. Not a lot, thankfully, but sometimes I'll see that and I'll go, oh, somebody needs to pull you aside and talk to you about that. <laughs> yes. Unless you own the beer company, I don't want to see beer Good in point. your profile picture. Good, yeah. point. Good I, point. I don't want to see other people in your profile picture. You've Good. got to think, so personal branding, like that's all I care about. I don't care about your company. I don't care about anything else, just you, because you will move to different companies. You'll do different things. You'll have different interests, et cetera, throughout your life. You're allowed to, you're a human, you change. But the one thing that stays with you is your personal logo, and that is your face. That's your right. face oh, is your logo. So make sure that I can see it and yes. make sure that it's the person, if I jump on a Zoom or I go and meet you at a coffee shop, are you the person that I met on LinkedIn? Oh, right. Like, there's nothing yeah. worse than, you know, right. being on Tinder and your date walks up and it's a different person. <laughs> it's the same with every relationship, whether right. it's business, personal, friendship, it doesn't matter. Great don't, point. don't catfish people. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Good. Yeah. Yes. 
correct. So a nice true. relevant recent picture, please. <laughs> yeah. Good. Excellent. Um, I guess the biggest tip is just, you know, just do a basic clear out of your profile. Use it like a landing page. It is your personal landing page. It is a digital extension of you. When people land on it, does it represent you? Is it If it's written in third person, scrap it. We want to write it as if you're actually speaking to the person that's landed on there. Okay. Um, you can also have a video on your, your profile now, which is when you click on the profile picture and there's like a little 30 second video. Use that because that's really, really personal for someone. You know, your picture is one thing, but all of a sudden I can hear you and I can see you moving. I'm going to get a good impression or a bad impression right. really quickly of you. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, use all these features that LinkedIn has for you. and They want you to populate your uh, profile. So as yeah. you're building it, it's going to say, guess what? You've not done this. Do you want to add a featured section? Oh, where did you go to school? Where did you work last? Like, it's going to prompt you to try and fill this out as much as possible. Because the more that's on there, the more keywords that there are, people can find you easier. People you've worked with previously or you've gone to school with, they can find you easier. So you're growing that network. People can also do that by association. So they're like, oh, you went to that school, so did I, or my grandfather right. did, whatever yes. it is. You just never know where that conversation starter is going to come from. Yeah. Yes. Oh, those are such great tips. Thank you. I learned a lot, actually. Uh, I didn't know about that little video thing. I can't wait to go do that today. Um, oh, yay. If you're starting a business, sh um, should you have a LinkedIn business page, like a page specifically for your business, or should you just highlight your business on your personal page? Yes, you need to actually have a business page. Okay. I don't care about your business page personally because there is no reach to business pages. Um, but if I, so I have my business, my business is relevant. So you come onto my profile because you've met me at a networking event or you're listening to me on this podcast. When you go onto my profile and you want to get to my business to go to my website to find out more about my services, you can scroll down, you can click that and it takes you to my businesses page and it has the website. It's really easy. So I'm taking away the effort for you to be able to find me, contact me, etc. Whereas if it's just a grey box thing, because you can't hook it yes. up and you can't have the logo, etc. So the only reason I think that you need to have that business page is because it makes your profile, it fills out your profile better. I, and yeah. it makes it so much easier for people to get onto your website because as much as I love LinkedIn right now, it's rented ground. Every social media platform is rented ground. Your website, you own that. So you want to be able to get traffic onto that where yeah. possible. So yes, build a business page, take 10 minutes, go and do it. You don't need to post anything on it because I can guarantee you that you will not, you'll not get much back from yeah, it. Right. Um, I mean, look at, Look at like I mean I know Virgin is a, a massive company, but Richard Branson he gets ten times the engagement that on his post than his company does. Right. Because right. People buy from people. Blah, people blah, buy like, from people. That's so yeah. true. Yes. Now so more than ever. And do you know? Yeah. Can you have more than one business page? You can have multiple. I think <gasps> I've. Um, okay, good. I'm an admin of about ten because I've set them all up for my clients and stuff. So um, if I can do that, I could definitely hook them all up to my page yeah. if I want to. You can go for it. Go for it. You can have loads. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I've learned so much today. Um, if people want to learn more about you and you have courses and you do coaching and where should they go? Um, they can come and find me on LinkedIn, Megan McNeil, and just say hey and say that you heard me on um, this po uh, this podcast and you're listening to Kathy. That would be awesome. If not, um, relevantbusiness.com um, is my website. And we've also got the, the LinkedIn program if you're interested in that. And we have a code, Kathy, don't we? We have uh, PPP. Yes. Yes, so she's been so kind to extend a special offer to PGP listeners. So would they go to um, Relevant? Is it? Yes, everything's on the website. It's just okay. a LinkedIn online course. Um, okay, so you super. can get all the details there or my personal branding coaching. That's, that's basically all I do is personal branding and I talk a lot about LinkedIn and I drink a lot of gin. 
Yes, <laughs> we're going to get to that. Don't go away. Um, I, I love that. And and all of these, as with everything, all of these links will be in the show notes. So if you're out for a walk or driving the car, don't ride, don't drive off the road trying to write this down. I got you. <laughs> That will all be there. Um, and thanks for that that special offer for people. So when they go there, they can sign up for um, the course on LinkedIn and just use the code PGP. Um, so thank you for that. Um, this has been so enlightening, Megan. I really enjoyed every minute, but it really is important to ask you about Jen before we go. How do you get, okay, so Jen, my, I don't have a lot of background in Jen. Here's my background with Jen. It's what was available, so I stole it from my parents when I was in high school. And it tasted like pine needles to me, but I, you know, didn't care because it was getting me where I was going, so to speak. So, okay. <laughs> like, there are different flavors of gin. I know nothing. So, oh, there are so many, so many gins. Um, but I also, I had a friend um, that we used to take some of my mom's gin as well. Okay. And my mom's not really a big drinker, but she had a friend that used to always come over for a gin. And she used to think that my mom just made the worst, the weakest gins. And it wasn't for years that they found out uh, that we'd been watering it down. Putting water back in. Yes. That's what I did the same thing. <laughs> I did the same thing. I think I'll so, get started. Anyone listening? Bad idea. Don't yeah, do that. Yeah, don't do that. Um, yes, there's lots of different gins. I mean, I'm not a gin connoisseur. I like what I like. Um, yeah makes sense and as long as it's not Bombay Sapphire I'll drink it I think uh, oh, I do have a a bottle oh, here on my us. shelf of Isle okay. of Paris gin uh, from Scotland infused with sugar kelp now this this is the good stuff I what love what in the this. hell is sugar kelp seaweed okay <laughs> so fancy seaweed. I was gonna say I know what sugar is and I know what kelp is but what is sugar kelp it's seaweed okay good all right so it's, in that no, way we could romantic you know okay right you gotta use the, the right Scottish Highlands. oh right that's right okay um <laughs> wow okay so you drink that and do you drink it straight up or do you mix it with anything no a little bit of tonic water you do yes. okay yeah i know a, a real gin connoisseur would drink it straight but i'm i'm not that hardcore i'm afraid i'm i'm not very fancy i just i just like a nice you gin like and i like. like playing about yeah i like playing about with the different things like i put grapefruit in with this one oh. i like cucumber thanks to hendrix i mean okay. everybody loves a bit of cucumber now but yeah capsicum red pepper pepper anything wow. you can put lots of things yeah light cheese that's a good one too it's, holy cow so much fun you can have you've so opened fun. up so many worlds for me today i you know what and it's friday so i think i'm gonna go get some gin and i'm gonna i bet i would have trouble finding the one that you just showed me though but i'm gonna look around well i'm gonna give you a quick story about this i know we've Please. been we've gone way off script but um, <laughs> that's how but... i roll it's fine <laughs> You used to only be able to get this at the cellar door on the Isle of Paris, and there was one ferry in and one ferry out, and wow. the distillery happens to be really close to the ferry. And I live out here in Australia, mom and dad are still in Scotland, and they were coming over here, and I kept going on about how I was running out of my, my gin. So my dad jumped on a ferry the day before coming to Australia, jumped on a ferry to go and pick me up a bottle of this gin to jump back, like literally ran oh in, God. got me my gin, just enough time to get back on the ferry to bring it over to me in Australia. And if he'd missed that ferry, he'd have missed his flight. So we'd have been in real trouble. Um, oh and I was gosh. just so excited. So this is uh, so this sweet. one actually has never been opened because that is the bottle that dad yeah. went all the way for just for me. Oh. Um, but now you can buy it anywhere in Australia. They are exporting all around the world. So you okay. will be able to get your hands on it. This is a all new right. thing only in the last year or so. So you will be able to find this. All right. Well, I have my mission for this weekend then. Thank you for that. And thanks for that story. That Talk about a romantic story. What a sweet dad. What a sweet dad to personally deliver gin. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for everything you taught us about today, Megan. I really appreciate it. This has been super enlightening. Thanks for being here, sharing your knowledge. Really appreciate it. And I'm just going to plant the seed because Megan and I talked about potentially doing a little training on the inside of the membership. So here's hoping we could both have gin. 
I'm down with that. We'll both pour a glass of gin and do a do a live training. How about that? I'm happy for that, but I mean, it's going to be morning is for one and night for the other. So. Oh, that's right. That's okay. I'll take one for the team. It would be morning for me and I'll do it. Whatever. <laughs> I, I'll I mean, live my college days somewhere. again. <laughs> that's right. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Megan. Really appreciate it. Take good care. Thank you so much, Kathy.